Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I am Mike. Jay's unavailable today, and typically we only put the video version of the podcast up on our Patreon, uh, which is in the link below if you want to check out the past ones, by the way. But uh, today we figured Halloween Kills was supposed to release on this day. So fuck it. Let's just give everything we've got. We've already got a video that's come out today, a uh, breakdown of the entire Halloween 2 novelization from way back in the day. Some pretty cool stuff in that. Uh, Friday Night Fights we got tonight, which is going to be amazing. 9 p.m. Eastern, putting your favorite horror movies against each other. That's going to be a blasty blast in the ass pants. And then uh, finally, we got, you know, this this today, some new Halloween news came out that we're going to talk about today uh, about the Halloween 666 Scott Spiegel movie that was supposed to come out. The uh, articles, uh, one of those Phantom Limbs articles by Bloody Disgusting where they talk about movies that never happened, a lot like the video series that we do, uh, where we break down scripts of movies that never happened, so on and so forth. Up and down, in the hole, around it, feels good. Um, and uh, finally, we're also going to unbox this thing that we got in the mail just now from Arrow Video, a special edition of Mallrats, which we'll get to. This thing is sexual, man. I mean, it is real nice. But we'll talk about that here in a few. So you guys remember a video we did way back, right? It was a Halloween 666 uh, movie breakdown, movies that never happened. It's the Quentin Tarantino, Scott Spiegel. Uh, it's, that, it's the movie that they were going to have something to do with. But there was a script for it that came out, which involved some crazy batshit ideas. I mean, it was pretty just... It was pretty fucking awful, to be honest with you. Michael Myers is a hobo in it. He kills someone by stuffing a rat into their mouth at one point. Definitely not the worst of it. But Paul Rudd's also in this. It was going to be the Halloween 6. Um, Paul Rudd's in it. Uh, it's got Dr. Loomis in it in a mental institution. It's It features Paul Rudd's its character is like a hacker this time. Uh, Tommy Doyle is, but, but and it involves VR and he like takes Michael Myers into the VR world. I mean, just some of the dumbest shit you could possibly imagine in your life. But uh, this is around the same time that Quentin Tarantino was on to maybe produce the film and Scott Spiegel was maybe to direct it. He had his interview with uh, Akkad and uh, everybody and it just didn't end up working out. We've also got a video all about that story. So uh, and I'll put both the links to those down in the description below for you guys if you don't know. But anyway, Bloody Disgusting and Jason Jenkins have an article, uh, a recurring article uh, that's pretty cool. It's called Phantom Limbs where they break down movies that never happened, scripts that never happened, and things like that, and talk about them, which is, it's a great idea. It's a lot like what we do on this show with a lot of our videos where we break down movies that never happened and why. But today, they actually added some fuel to that fire about the proposed version of Halloween 6 that would have maybe been directed by Scott Spiegel. Okay, so here's where Spiegel talks about the notes that he made on the idea for a movie he had, which is separate from that original script we were talking about. Uh, and honestly, it's, it's, it's strange, but it's still better than that. But anyways, it says, Mr. Spiegel reads directly from his treatment. Police wagon Myers breaks free from the chains. This is the end of Halloween 5, the start of Halloween 6. Grabs a guy by the neck, lifts him up, shoves his head through the top of a vehicle, crunch. The guard dangles helplessly. Myers grabs the other guard, slams him into another guard, pushes them through the back door. The other guard, with his head through the roof, sees a sign. Come on, we're not really going to do that gag, are we? Laughs. Well, the guard loses his head in the most gruesome of ways, and then the vehicle crashes and explodes. So that sounds really, really hokey, like putting a guy's head through a ceiling and then him seeing the sign afterwards. Uh, but that being said, I mean, Michael escapes kind of the same idea that we're going with here. Uh, then he says, what he says next really interesting, he says, there's a prison montage. Michael Myers is stripped of his personal belongings, including his mask, which if you remember the end of H5, they put him in a fucking jail cell wearing his mask. Because, of course, you know, why wouldn't police take his mask? I don't know if you guys have ever uh, stopped by the old, the old, county hole but uh they pretty much spread your butt cheeks you know what i mean they're not gonna let you wear a mask in there you can't even wear like a long sleeve shirt don't ask me how i know that that's my own personal goddamn business now come on from this point on we see everything from myers pov only from this point on meaning like through the whole movie that's really interesting hopefully he just means in that little section because that would be you need the mask in there man uh but myers is fingerprinted hosed down and thrown into a cell the way it usually would go. Uh, then there's a courtroom scene, the trial of Michael Myers. Loomis argues his case that Myers is beyond psychiatric help. The beast must die. Not the first time I've heard of a horror icon on trial. We've heard about Freddy. There's versions of Freddy versus Jason, which includes Jason on trial. Uh, interesting to see. We've also seen Loomis go before a court before, uh, just never with Myers present, especially not after everything that happened. But that's pretty cool to think about. Uh, but he says, we're introduced to Dana, the last living blood relative of Michael Myers. In this version as well, she's having a nightmare. Uh, he goes on to say that uh, in the nightmare, she falls into a grave. Michael Myers appears above her, throwing the, the dirt on top of her. Uh, he says, credits, carving jack-o'-lantern, blood oozes from orifices. I like that. I like the idea of a, of a jack-o'-lantern with blood pulping out of it. That sounds like a pretty badass opening. 
One year later, Halloween Eve, we're introduced to the new Hattonfield, and he says it's like a macabre Graceland, and Halloween is Elvis's birthday. So we've also done that before in different iterations of Halloween, where Halloween, sometimes, sometimes it'll be shut down, like nobody wants to talk about Halloween since Michael Myers, and in different scripts and iterations of it that uh, they shut it down for a while, and they bring it back, and there's all these media there all the time. Uh, and his version, uh, I kind of like what they did there. They made it like fucking Gatlinburg, Tennessee or Pigeon Forge. It's like a hot spot for, for Halloween. Pretty cool idea, um, depending on how you do it. But he says media have set up camp. It's the 30th anniversary of the initial mur murders. And we get a guy named Miles Anthony from Inside Source that starts to take a form of a scream movie because, you know, all these bastards are going to get it. Not that far off of what we ended up doing with H2O, right? I mean, H2O pretty much with the scream route by the, by the end of it. Uh, that's interesting. I guess the inside source is the, you know, um, Courtney Cox, Gail Weathers type idea that they were maybe going with. And there was a little bit of that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there was a little bit of that actually in the original Halloween 666 script that we shit so much on. There was news camera guys. I believe they go out to a swamp in the middle of nowhere and Michael takes them all out before he goes to a party where Tom McDoyle's at. And that's where all the crazy dumb VR shit happens. But that's, I, th I think he says early in this article that he was thinking about keeping some of the elements everybody liked from the previous scripts and then doing his own thing with it. So that must have been one of the things they kept. Um, so he says so they're gonna have a big blowout, a 30th anniversary party. Lewis is our version. He becomes an active player, hanging around, tracking Michael's down, Michael down, still doing his thing. Again, something they had in the other script as well, even though his character was just, I mean, he was literally in a mental institution when you find him, which was just sad. Uh, I don't like that idea of that's where Loomis is, you know, spending his time. He deserves a little bit more than that. It says, Michael's on his way to Haddonfield, picked up by people on their way to a big party in a pickup truck. One of the kids tries to jokingly pull off My Myers' mask, and Myers wipes them all out. That sounds like a fun-ass scene. Would like to see that happen. Uh, he goes on to describe a variation of this scene, larger in scope. He's a ghostly... Uh, he gets on a train? He gets on a fucking train? He is a ghostly passenger seated by himself at the first stop. A slew of Michael Myers get on board, drinking and carousing. Car carousing. Uh, all partiers head towards the anniversary party in Haddonfield. A female Michael Myers, Michelle Myers, sits on his lap. Finally, they all begin removing their masks. All except, bing, bing, turkey's done, Michael Myers. Next stop, Michael exits the train. The other passengers step aboard and immediately scream. Michael has wiped out the slew of imposters. I like it. A lot of death. A lot, a lot of death. And to see Michael Myers killing other Michael Myers would be pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, I, I'm... So far, I'm pretty fucking, it, it, I'm dying. So far, I'm pretty fucking in, Mr. Spaggle. Mr. Scott Spaggle. He says, from this point, the notes get skimpier and skimpier. Michael stalks unsuspecting Dana, big set piece, uh, where everyone realizes the tricks are up and people are dying. Myers is on the rampage. Everyone in town panics. It's at this point that our heroes kill someone in a shape mask thinking it was Michael. So this is how Act 3 starts off. Haddonfield is deserted, so there's another Ben Tramer episode, basically. Uh, it's midnight. Loomis has an autopsy done to make sure they really got Myers. Again, Halloween 2. Uh, but Myers is still alive. We get into some sh cemetery shenanigans. That sounds like a fucking terrible bar. Cemetery shenanigans! I got gravestones as chairs. Uh, and you can have a skeleton hot dog. I don't know. I don't know what I was going with there. There's a cemetery climax. Uh, I love climaxing in the cemetery. I don't know about you guys, but some missing coffins and some missing headstones. Loomis sheriff boyfriend showdown at the cemetery. Loomis uses weapons in his wheelchair to thwart the shape. What? Is it fucking Scooby-Doo, Scott? Does he have a, does he like spit out oil and Michael trips like it's Mario Kart? Weapons in his, I hope he's just talking about a shotgun stuck in the seat, man. That's, I don't like that idea at all. Um, Loomis's last stand, the shape escapes. His bloody mask on the spike of the cemetery fence is all that remains. Dana and Loomis are the last people standing. I like that Myers is like, I'm done with this. You'll never catch me because you don't know what I look like without my mask on. <laughs> I'm done. I'm never coming back to Haddonfield. Never. Um, epilogue. The surviving sheriff talks with Dana after the climax. <laughs> He tells her he has some troubling news. As it turns out, the autopsy that was done when they weren't certain that they had killed the real shape ultimately revealed that the body was that of Michael Myers? Let me read that one more time. As it turns out, the autopsy that was done when they weren't certain 
They killed the real shape, ultimately revealed that it was the shape. Huh? Dana looks ill. Then who's wearing that mask and doing the rest of the killing? At the same moment, in the window in the background, we see a figure wearing the Michael Myers mask. He stares silently at Dana, cut to black. No. 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 Nuh-uh. Mm -mm. You better not. You better not. You don't do that shit. It's not Roy Burns, Michael, Tom. And this bitch, that's a terrible idea. You had me with the with the imposter Myers. You had me with some of the other stuff, but goofy Scooby-Doo wheelchair Loomis weapons? And then imposter Michael Myers? No. No. That's a terrible idea. Don't ever, ever, ever do that. Now, you listen to me. Don't ever, ever do that. That's a terrible idea. And that's probably part of the reason uh, the Akkads did not have any interest in this in the end uh no disrespect mr spiegel that's just how i feel about the character not that you're watching uh so he, he wraps up by reflecting back on his association with halloween he says just for that to happen and for the wind to pick up as a footnote in the lore i'm just glad to be a part of the trivia aspect to a halloween flick so uh one more time i want to say uh this this article uh the interview was well done it was done by bloody disgusting uh and um it was done by it's a long, long ass article. Uh, Jason Jenkins, Phantom Limbs. I'll put a link down to that below as well as our coverage of this story up until this point. But uh, what do you guys think about all that news? That is pretty crazy stuff. Uh, that's some That's some pretty wild shenanigans. What's the name of that bar you like so much, Farva? Shenanigans. Uh, but yeah, cool things. Michael fighting imposter Michaels. Uh, Michael getting picked up by a group of people and slaughtering them uh they add a new character into the myers lore which is dangerous to do that because i feel like the more and more you go oh michael myers has one more family member to kill oh michael myers has another family member to kill it just gets repetitive and then you run out of ideas you're like oh he has to kill a family member so uh iffy with that either way i still will say that this version even with imposter myers this was to me is like in the top five of things that you just don't do you don't roy burns michael myers uh, and it's kind of the same thing in effect that they did at the end of five. They introduced some crazy character out of nowhere and they didn't actually have a plan to go forward with it. Kind of did the same thing at the end of four, uh, even though the writer who wrote Jamie killing her mom uh, actually wanted her to go forth as Michael Myers. Uh, but, you know, uh, Trancus, the, the Cods didn't. I don't think it was Trancus then, but um, yeah, just a bad, bad idea for the ending. Uh, other than that, though, they had some good stuff, and it was still, still better than virtual, virtual reality hobo Michael Myers, for sure, for sure. But uh, what do you guys think about that? Comment down below. That's fucking some fascinating shit, and I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit tonight on Friday Night Fights. Actually, let's just open it now. I want to open it. I want to get inside of it. Oh, oh no, oh god! I just made like the biggest fucking boo boo ever. Uh. So I tried to open it with a pen and the pen's leaking. So look at this guys. I put it on the one, I put it on the one spot, the one spot that's not gonna get ink on it. All right, let's see, let's use something else. Don't spread it around. Don't spread it around. Oh God, what a fucking, what a mistake. You know, and the reason I wanted to make sure to get this up today too is because Halloween Kills was supposed to come out today. And, you know, 2020 has just basically just been a year of screwing us someplace uncomfortable, like uh, the backseat of a Volkswagen. Which is a line from this movie, one of my favorite movies of all time, Andrea's favorite movies of all time. And we will get some, oh my God, open it, my Jesus. Oh man, I cannot believe I just fucking did that, man. What a deuce hole. God damn it. All right, so you got it right here. Mall rats, check out that that sweet cover art right there. Got Brody and everybody. Uh, the special features on here are crazy, man. Uh, it's got a brand new restoration by Arrow Films. 
uh, both the theatrical and extended cuts of the film. It's been approved by director Kevin Smith, a TV cut of the film featuring hilarious overdubbing to cover up profanity, which will be hilarious. And, you know, that's why you buy, I think, when you do buy, and I don't buy them a lot, but when you buy, like, really special editions of old movies, you buy them for new shit, new reasons to watch them, new commentaries and whatever. And, by the way, we have a commentary, an entire full commentary for this movie on our Patreon as well that we did a while back for the people in the commentary tier. But that's what's great about them. And that, there's a reason right there, the TV cut of the film. But there's also all the other stuff that comes with the movie, including the uh, commentary with Kevin Smith, Scott Miozier, uh, Jason Lee, Ben Affleck, Jason Mewes, a butt ton of special features, man. Uh, and it's got a bunch of cool stuff inside. But anyway, you can look at the long list of special features right there. It's forever long, Steven. It's forever long. Open this thing up. Let's see. I got kids playing in my house, so. I don't have to be too disgusting today. Um, all right, there goes that. Oh, oh. <laughs> anyway, oh, here we go. That's the disc. And check this out. I want to see the goddamn sailboat. Good thing they're not paying attention to me. You got Jay and Silent Bob in there. That's dope as hell, man. That is cool. Look at the other disc. Just separations of the cover art, basically. Still cool. Let's see. Take those out. Okay, Steven. All right. Oh, take out the back of it. It's dope. It's the original. An O to the original right there. That's cool. I dig that a lot. And then, what's behind door number two? Oh, it's just the explanation of what's inside of there again. Um, my favorite thing about air releases, though, and I don't know why, but this just gets me going. And my Ganges gives me a little shot of dopamine is that little section right there. I don't know why I love that little hole so much. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see what's in this pamphlet here. You got the. The last shot of the movie on the back. That's cool. And in this, you got just just some cool stuff. A little booklet with some cool. I'll show it to you guys. Some cool deets from the movie and stuff like that. That's neat. And there's an ad for some zombie for sale. This is dope. blueprint Let's bring this back so you guys can see it it's the blueprint of the plan to take down lafleur in the game show the fours yeah so this celebrates its 25th anniversary and this limited edition boasting a brand new restoration oh it's a new it's a new restoration too and hours of new bonus content so there it is guys that's the two disc version of mall rats from arrow video uh, who puts out, if you guys ever got their shit, they got good shit. I feel like Jonah Hill and get him to the Greek. Like, my dad loves your shit, Matt Lauer. So, that, guys, that is pretty much it. I hope that you guys have enjoyed uh, Halloween Horror Month so far. And I hope that you're not having too bad of a day knowing that we should have been talking Halloween kills right now. Right now. We should have been talking about Halloween kills. Uh, fun stuff upcoming. You guys have no idea about all the fucking crazy ideas we have for the content filling out the rest of October. And, uh, again... I want to mention one more time in search of darkness. We have our own link to it down below where you can get three posters and an enamel pin. You can get your name in the credits. You can get all sorts of wacky wackadoo shit. And if you're sad about not being able to watch Halloween kills today, uh, then if you get this, you get a digital version here in just a couple weeks, even though the actual uh, thing doesn't ship till December. Uh, but the opportunity to buy ends on Halloween. So it's Friday. Uh, if that's something you want to do, you can do that today. Use our link down below to get that shit uh, in Search Darkness, four hour plus 80s horror documentary. And again, uh, thank you, Arrow Video, for uh, the Mall Rats. I cannot wait to get into this and get an excuse to watch this movie another 70 goddamn times because I love it with all my heart. And uh, Arrow Video is the shit. And you guys are the shit. And we will see you guys tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern for some Friday night fights. Uh, what do you guys think about the new Halloween news? And uh, would you like to. Uh, you know, make out. What are you gonna do on October 31st? What are you gonna do on October 31st? Here comes that white-faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sisters, tits, 
Cause he's a white-faced fucker Loomis can't recover Dr. Challenge drunk again Sleeping with your sister's friends Do you want to know about the darkness? I said God damn God damn you fucker I said God damn A lot of people don't know the darkness that goes inside their hearts I said God damn God damn you Michael What are you gonna do on October 31st?